Well, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning, and we're back again with Coffee with Doc. Glad you're joining us this morning. Hope your day's off to a good start. If not, I hope it'll get better. Well, we've been talking about Joshua. We've been talking about Joshua uh, and how God always had someone to step up. And uh, after the death of Moses, uh, Joshua stepped up. And God said, you're going you're gonna to carry out my plan because my promise, my presence, my power is always with you. Now, what we want to look at today and tomorrow and hopefully finish up uh, probably two chapters, maybe even three. Uh, but that's the subject of God's disturbing delays. Now, when I say that God always has a plan and God always carries out his plan with his promise, his presence and his power, he doesn't always do it on your timetable or my timetable. Sometimes God has what, what I call God's disturbing delays. And we find that in chapter one, we find it in chapter two, we find it in chapter three. And uh, each time it's a three day delay. Uh, listen to Joshua chapter one and verse 10 and 11. He said, uh, Joshua ordered the officers of the people Go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you'll cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Why a three-day delay? And he repeats that in chapter 2. Throughout the whole chapter, there was delays, most of the times in three days. And then in, in chapter 3 and, and verse 5, there's another time uh, when when the Lord said, when Joshua says, consecrate yourself uh, for tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things. I mean, always tomorrow, always three days. Why God's disturbing delays? Well, let's walk through this just a little bit and see what, if we're waiting on God's plan to carry through, God sees the whole thing. However, we're limited by time and space, and we can't see the whole thing. It's like if we were on the interstate, and we were stuck in traffic, and we're going an inch at a time, and we've been there about 30 minutes, and we wonder what in the world could be keeping this uh, tied up so long. And then say about a mile and a half ahead, there's a bridge, and uh, there's a truck that's dangling over the edge of that bridge, and the cab is about to fall. It's just hanging on by the hitch. And there are rescue units that are trying to get a man out of that cab. Now, if you knew that, you wouldn't be so uh, anxious to be moving because your little spot is, is not that important to you when the life of somebody else is, is uh, in the balance. But let's say there's somebody in a helicopter and he can see you and your anxiety, but he can also see the problem on the bridge. Now that's the view. I know that's a very terrible illustration. That's the view that God has of everything. He sees it all at the same time. So he knows that there's a reason why here and in chapter two, twice more, he says, wait three days. Now, why would he say that? Well, first of all, there was somebody who needed to be saved. And can I tell you, there is always somebody who needs to be saved, who needs to know the Lord, who needs to be called to salvation. There's always somebody who needs to be saved. So when God gives you a, a disturbing delay, use it to find out why God is causing that delay. Who needs to hear something? Who uh, needs to follow Christ in your life? Who, who is it that you need to talk to? Who is it that you need uh, to have an impact on? Here, there was someone who needed to be saved. And in all of chapter two, we're introduced to Rahab, the harlot and her family. And even though she had messed up, even though she, uh, her life was in shambles, yet when the spies that Joshua sent out, the two spies came to her house, she welcomed them. And it was during that three-day delay that God used these spies to forever change Rahab's life. And when they came in, she said, in essence, I know you've come from the Lord, and I know that your Lord is the only salvation. 
So I want to put my trust totally in your God. Now, she didn't say it in exactly so many words, but that's in essence what she was doing. There was someone who needed to be saved, and it was Rahab and her whole family. And so you know the story of how she hid the spies, and when the king's men came uh, and, and said, uh, those men that came to your house, where are they? We, we want them right now. And she said, well, they're not here. They were here, but they left. When the gates closed, they left. And uh, if you'll hurry, you can catch them. She was not only uh, a harlot, she was a pretty good liar. And uh, she sent them on their way while she hid the men in the upper room or up on the roof in, under the hay. And uh, when they were gone, when the soldiers were gone, she went up there and she said, I'm going to hide you, but please, when you leave, I'm putting all my trust for my family in your God and your word. And uh, that's the way that Rahab becomes so important in the entire uh, history of Israel and the life of Christ. And she told them when they left, she said, go and stay three days. Don't, don't go be running around and trying to get back. Wait a while because they're on their way in a hurry. And if you'll wait, you, you can get back safely. And, and so God sometimes has us in a waiting mode. And that's the most difficult thing to do is to wait on the Lord. You see it in the life of the disciples. You see how, how uh, damaged their whole outlook was when Jesus was in the tomb. Uh, when they gathered in that upper room, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. And some of them believed the women. Some of them didn't believe the women. And, and it was a terrible time. Why? Because they were having to wait. And sometimes God has us to wait three days, sometimes three weeks, sometimes three years. And as we said about Moses, sometimes we never see the promise, but it's still God's promise. So let me just remind you that in God's disturbing delays, there's always somebody that you can touch, somebody that you can cheer up, somebody that you can hide some way that even you yourself can find your way back to God as Rahab did. Well, God bless you. We're going to finish up with this uh, tomorrow. Uh, so you join back with us tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great day.